You are now tuned in to the network. The YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs it down to a more simple language. And today's topic is layer two and layer three switches. This is a subsection of explain the role and function of network components. This is a topic in the in Cisco's CCNA exam. Now, before we go on to this blueprint, I'm gonna go ahead and make my obligatory YouTube request. If y'all can go ahead and hit that like button, you know, it helps with the YouTube algorithm, you know, helps put this uh, video in people's video feeds and suggestions and stuff like that. Overall, just helps with my channel and stuff like that. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, let you know when I upload these videos. And, you know, put a comment below for any kind of constructive criticisms you may have. So let's go ahead and take a look at the exam blueprint to see where we came from and where we are headed. All right, so this is the exam blueprint, Cisco's CCNA exam version 1.0. This is the exam code, exam code 200-301. Make sure you're signed up for the correct exam, correct language even. Um, and we covered in the last video routers, right? And today we are going to be covering layer two and layer three switches. We're going to explain here, right? That don't mean we got to you know, do any hands-on and stuff like that. So we just got to explain it. That's what they are uh, requiring us for this exam. But you know what? I'm going to kind of change it up with these topics here. We're not only going to explain it, we're also going to do some hands-on for each one of these topics because I want to make sure that y'all know this stuff like in and out. So you not only have to be able to explain it, but you want to be able to, you, obviously you want to be hands-on with, with these networking devices and stuff like that. So what is a layer two and layer three switch? Simply put, one does you know, deals with layer two. We'll talk about what that is and stuff like that. It deals with Mac addresses, frames, VLANs, and stuff like that, right? That's why at the bottom here it says, I like Mac addresses, VLANs, frames, etc." That's what on the left-hand side, the layer two switch does. Now the layer three switch on the right-hand side, he does basically the same thing as layer two switches, right? Deals with Mac addresses, frames, VLANs, etc. However, he likes to also do routing. So, the layer three switch is pretty much the same thing as layer two, but it also does routing. Now you can cut this video off and stop it right here and note it down. Now you know the difference between layer two and layer three switch, but obviously for the Cisco CCNA exam, we need to get a little deeper than that and, and talk more in depth about what layer two is, what layer three is, and what the differences between the two are, right? Now, before we do all of that, we need to take it back. And y'all know I always say on this channel, before you know where you are headed, you need to know where you came from, right? So we need to talk about a little bit, a little history about the internet, right? So the first inception or like first idea of what the internet was, it was called ARPANET, right? It was basically like two computers and one was like in the, uh, I believe it was in Stanford and the other one was over at the University of uh, California, UCLA basically, right? And they basically had these two computers and they were like trying to get them to talk to each other, right? So they had one computer at one college, one computer at the other college, and they sent a message to each other, right? And this happened on October 29th, 1969. This is a fun fact for y'all, right? So, and while he was over there, they sent the message. They tried to type in the word login, right? So they sent the letter L and it was like, did you get it? Oh yeah, they got it. So they got the letter L, right? They typed the letter O, did you get it? Yeah, they got it. They tried to type the letter G and boom, the system crashed. And that was the first message that came across the ARPANET or the first inception of the internet. And they got the word LO and that's all they did. So, and that's what happened when they first tried to send a message, right? And it was just like, it was groundbreaking. Now to y'all, like when you're using your cell phone, working, you're using your computer and you send an email or you're watching this video on YouTube, it's nothing to y'all. But back then, obviously in the sixties, it was something that was just amazing. We had a computer that was miles away, about 300 something miles away they were able to talk to each other, right? And then basically, the, and that ARPANET basically grew and grew and grew to this, what you see, this map right here. Here's UCLA right here, right? And then we got, uh, I believe it was, yeah, I believe it was, I believe it was Stanford. What? Anyways, they, this was Stanford right here, right? Now, this is a logical map, so it ain't exactly how it is, like physically, right? But basically, those two computers talked to each other, right? And then the ARPANET grew and grew and grew just like the internet. Now, nowadays the ARPANET is offline, but that's basically how they came up with something that was similar to the internet that we see today, right? Now, we had companies back in the day like IBM, Texas Instruments and stuff like that. Once they got hold of uh, this, you know, two computers talking to each other, networking, they were just like, oh, you can send files and, and send messages to each other far away? Oh, we got to do this. We got to do the same thing, right? So like, let's say for example, 
uh, Texas Instruments came up with it. They said, let's go ahead and make our own network, right? Put a PC here, put a computer there, put a computer there. And they basically did the same thing and had the computers was able to talk to each other, right? Then we had another company, another vendor, pretty much did the same thing. They just had two computers or an, you know, another PC there, another PC there. They weren't PCs, they were like big supercomputers that were just like, they would take up a whole room, right? And they would connect to each other just like this, the same way the same way the internet is, right? Now the problem was, when one vendor came up with it, let's say that this was, let's say that this was uh, Texas Instruments, right? And this was like RCA, believe it or not, RCA was in the, in the computer game, right? The thing was, they had their own protocols and their own, like, like basically their own languages to be able to talk to each other. Like Apple has Apple Talk. They were able to talk to each other using Apple Talk. There's di there was different protocols, but it was like different languages, right? They also had their own connectors and stuff like that. So this computer would talk to this computer, but it was physically connected using, you know, different connectors, right? So the thing is, this computers on this network couldn't talk to computers on this network, right? So that was the problem we had. Imagine today if you had an Apple, like an Apple iPhone, and somebody else has an Android phone, they can't talk to each other for the simple fact that they're different vendors, right? Well, this company called ISO, or International Standards Organization, they basically said, hold up, hold up, hold up. Y'all can't be doing this. Y'all can't be coming up with your own networks and stuff like that. We need to be able to make all this, and there's a worldwide organization, right? So we say, we need to standardize this stuff. Y'all need to be talking the same languages, using the same type of connectors and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and make some standards. Let's make everything the same so that way we all can work together, right? What they basically did was they had all these meetings and stuff like that. They had all these panels and stuff like that. And they came up with two kind of like reference models. There's the OSI model on the left, as you can see. And on the right hand side, we got the TCP IP model, right? They said, we're going to use this to kind of like standardize all of these connectors and protocols and, and all these different type of, you know, computers and stuff like that. So that way we can talk to each other using the same stuff. Right. But then just like Betamax and, and VHS in the, in the, in the eighties, they were like basically two type of reference models that were like going against each other. It was like, a, it was like a war versus two models. Right. TCP IP end up winning the, the whole thing, right? And they basically like, we're gonna use TCP IP as the main standard. And so applications will we be, uh, you know, referenced in the application layer, transport, internet, and network access layer, and so on and so forth, right? But we still refer to the OSI model to this day, as you can see on the left-hand side, right? Because it, it was, it was something that was a little bit more granular and it had, it's a little bit, there's, as you can see on the left-hand side, there's more layers, right? So it explained a little couple more things there, right? So that's why we still reference the OSI model, right? Now, we look here, let's, let's just forget about TCP IP for now, right? We need to talk about the OSI model because we're talking about layer two and layer three switches, right? So when you look at this OSI model right here, we got bottom over here, physical, right? The physical, like actual cables, and actual connectors and stuff like that. That's layer one, right? And then we got the data link layer, which deals with MAC addresses, VLANs, etc., frames and stuff like that. This is layer two, right? Then we got obviously layer three, layer four, so on and so forth when we go up, right? So layer three is networking and stuff like that. And this is what we concerned with, what we wanted to talk about, layer two and layer three. That's why they refer to layer two switches handling layer two functions because layer two functions is what mac addresses mac addresses vlans and the pdus or data is transmitted in frames or ethernet frames right and they and they talk to each other in local area networks using frames that is why we call them layer two because they handle layer two functions layer three obviously they handle layer three functions which is what we talked about in the last video routing and routers right so why you would think oh well, why deal with uh, layer three switches and we have routers, right? We'll get more into that in a couple next couple slides here So official definition layer two switching now. Yeah, I know like I get my sources from Wikipedia I don't care if y'all feel like oh, you know, this stuff is editable or Wikipedia is not a reliable source but when it comes to networking and technology and stuff like that nine times out of ten It is reliable. But anyways layer two switching uses Mac addresses of the host network interface cards to decide where to forward frames. We talk about frames, all right? Frames are basically like it's kind of like it's kind of like IP packets, but it works at layer two, 
and it deals with Ethernet and Ethernet headers and stuff like that. That's what frames are, right? We go back to OSI model, frames deal with layer two, right? That's what that that's how the, the information is, is passed on to each other at layer two using frames. Layer two switching is hardware based, which means switches uses application specific integrated circuits or basically it's basically a chip that's inside the switch and it's really fast. They're called ASICs to build and maintain the folding information base to perform packet forwarding at wire speed, right? So let's break this stuff down right here, right? We said we know what layer two is, right? Layer two is deal with frames, VLANs, etc. right? The MAC address, what's a MAC address? A MAC address is like a hexadecimal number that's like, it's got like 12 numbers in it, right? It's gonna have letters and numbers in it together though, right? Every device has, any end device has a MAC address. Your cell phone, you can go on your cell phone, look at the menu, you'll see there it has a MAC address. An access point will have a MAC address. You'll see it on the bottom of the sticker. A, uh, a switch, a router, all these devices have MAC addresses, right? And they are all unique. Every device that has a MAC address, they're all unique and they there's no two MAC addresses that are gonna be the same in the whole world. Every, every device has its own MAC address, right? Unless you spoof it somehow, right? And that's what a MAC address is. It's like a, it's like a, it's an identifier for each PC or each you know device on the network, and they sometimes call it a physical address, or sometimes they call it a burned in address because it's actually burned onto the NIC card. What's the NIC card? The NIC card is the actual de um, like port or you know interface that allows you to get on the internet. That's what the NIC card is. So like for example, uh, this port, this interface right here, will be considered the NIC card of your access point right here. That's what the NIC card is. Your PC, your laptop, they all have NIC cards. That the, 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 the port or interface that allows you to get on the internet is the NIC card, right? So that's what layer two switching is about. And it, let's, let's, let's break down what layer two switching is and the actions of it and how it happens and how it works, right? Shout out to Window Odom and the Cisco official cert guide. That's where I got this image from, from right here. So we look at this uh, network right here. We got a switch. This is the layer two switching process right here, right? We got a switch right here that does basically lay, layer two functions. It's strictly layer two, right? So it deals with frames, MAC addresses, et cetera. And I'll explain that right now, right? So we got we got Fred right here and we got Barney right here. Now, obviously this is the Flintstones, right? <laughs> And we got Wilma and uh, Betty right here, right? So let's say we got Fred who is going to send a frame to the example of a MAC address right here, right? Zero two zero, zero, zero. Who is that? That's Barney. So that means Fred is trying to talk to Barney and let him know, like, you know, he tired of uh, Wilma or whatever the case may be. He going to send a message to her, right? So now let's make pretend that we just powered the switch on, even though all these devices are connected to it, right? When Fred sends a message, the frame, it's gonna go across, he's saying, it needs to go to this. This is Frank, this is Fred's MAC address, right? Well, the switch is gonna be like, what the hell is that MAC? I don't, I don't know what that address is. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna, what's called flood the frame. He's gonna take the frame, make copies of it, and send it to, he's gonna send it to Wilma, he's gonna send it to Betty, and he's also gonna send it to Barney because he don't know where Barney lies at, right? Does he lie on this port? But he's gonna send it to every frame except from where it came from. Where did it come from? FA01 or fast ethernet 01 port, right? So that's what happens when it first comes in, right? Now, the second things that happen, we know it destined for, for that IP or that MAC address, right? And he says to forward it out to FA02, but he don't know that yet because the MAC address table is typically empty. When he sends these, when he makes these copies, right? Wilma's gonna see it and be like, oh, this ain't for me, this this for Barney. Hopefully she ain't read the message because Fred over there talking about uh, Fred over there talking about Wilma. So, anyways, Wilma's gonna drop the frame, and that's basically what she's gonna do. And then the switch is gonna be like, oh, okay, that means that means Barney does not lie on FA03. So I'm gonna go ahead and take note of that. But now he knows Wilma lies on layer three. I mean, uh, on FA03, he's gonna put that in his MAC address table. This little database right here. Sometimes they call it the CAM table because it's the actual chip is called a CAM or content address memory. They call it a CAM table sometimes. And uh, sometimes they call it the MAC table, right? This is where he keeps all, that's where he remembers where everybody is at on all these ports, right? And then he sends it to, he also he made a copy and he sent it to Betty. Betty's gonna see that that frame and be like, zero two zero zero zero. that ain't me, I'm zero two zero 
four four four. So that ain't made for me. She gonna drop that frame, and then the switch is gonna be like, okay, he's gonna remember that. Put it in his MAC address table. Oh, okay. Well, now I know Betty lies on FA zero four. Builds it, and that's how a switch builds its MAC test, MAC address table. Finally, the frame heads over to FA zero two, and then Barney's gonna be like, oh, I got a message for Fred. And he's going to reply or do whatever with it. He's going to process the frame and do whatever he need to do with it. But he's also, once once uh, once the switch learns, okay, Barney's processing that that frame. That means Barney lies on what port? FA02. He going to take that information, put it in his MAC address table, and now he knows where everybody lies at on this port. So anytime, like let's say Wilma needs to send a message to Betty. He gonna do the same thing, and now he knows where Betty lies at. He knows that Betty lies at FA04. So now when women want to talk shit about Fred, <laughs> the switch is gonna be like, oh, okay, I know where Betty is at because he remembered it in his MAC address table. And that is how layer two switching process works. This is something very, very fundamental when you want to learn how to Cisco CCNA exam. This is how layer two switching works. Now, let's talk about layer three switching, right? Here's the official definition from my favorite source, Wikipedia. A layer three switch can perform some or all of the functions normally performed by a router. Most network switches, however, are limited to supporting a single type of physical network, typically ethernet. Now, what we did right here, this is basically ethernet. When you see these ports, that's why we call these those ports on the, on the, on like the port that I show you on the AP, it's called the ethernet port, right? So that, cause it's a standard. That's what OSI models did. They said, okay, we're going to, we're going to use talk using ethernet, right? Typically ethernet, whereas a router may support different kinds of physical networks on different ports. So layer three switching works differently. It doesn't layer three member is routing what we discussed in the last video. Routers take do what? They take packets. They don't take frames. They take packets from one network and send it off to another network. That's what routers do. They route, right? So now a layer three switch can also, it does what I explained here in the layer two switching process, but it also routes, right? So it takes packets from one network, sends it off to another network, just like a router does, right? And it make you think, okay, well then, well, why would I even need a, a router then if a layer two switch, a layer three switch can do what a layer two switch and layer three switch does? Well, there's pro, there's pros and cons to using uh, a layer three switch and, uh, and a router. So let's discuss the layer three switching process, right? Now there's more ways that we could do layer three switch, but I'm a, I wanna compare a layer three switch versus what a router does, right? So let's say we haven't gotten to, we haven't talked about VLANs yet, but let's say just know VLANs are virtual or local area networks. It's a way to kind of segment your network at the layer two or in, in a broadcast domain, right? So we got, let's say we got PC, uh, we got a PC here and he's in VLAN 15, right? And he's connected to that port right there. And then we got another PC right here and he's connected to like VLAN 20 or 12. Uh, I'll just go with 12 right now, right? So the problem is these two PCs can't talk to each other right now because they are on two different networks or two different virtual local area networks, VLANs. So they can't talk to each other. In order for these two PCs to talk to each other, we need a router. Right, the switch is not going to be able. He knows where this lies and where this lies, but the but the thing is, they're in two different networks, though. They're in two different VLANs, right? It's not like what we explained in the other video. This is one whole VLAN. We didn't uh, introduce the VLAN concept here. That's how come everybody can talk to. You. But now these two are on two different lo virtual local area networks, so they can't talk to each other. In order for them to talk to each other, we need a router. So we introduced the router, right? So then in order for the PC in VLAN 15, be able to talk to VLAN 12 PC, he's gonna send a message to the switch. The switch is gonna be like, oh, that's a different, that's a totally different virtual or local area network. He's gonna have to send it to the router. The router's gonna see that, oh, he's on this network. And then this is a trunk right here. The trunk carries, remember we talked about this in, uh, I believe it's another, it's a Wi-Fi video I, worked, I talked about what trunking is. We'll, we'll discuss more in depth on what trunking is. Basically, it's the link that be able to, that's able to carry all the VLANs, right? So that means this link is in VLAN 15 only. This link is only in VLAN 12. This one has 15 and 12. That's what the trunk does. It carries all the VLANs, right? So then 
So then the the frame goes up over here, and then it turns into a packet because the router three uh, routers deal with uh, with routing, right? Layer three, right? Turns into a packet and sends it off to the uh, the switch, and then he's gonna be send it off to uh, VLAN uh, the the PC and VLAN twelve, right? Now this is all fine and dandy, right? But notice here we got two VLANs here, right? We got a one interface here. We got one interface here. This is limited when we're using a router, right? Now we got this one, right? We got two VLANs here, right? We got two VLANs here. Now we gonna have the PC and one VLAN here, one VLAN here. Now notice we've got one router. We got branch router two. We got branch router three. Now we have a core router. It gets pretty costly when you're talking about routers here. So this is not very scalable. In other words, you can't make our network grow here. If we need to add VLANs, add another router. It gets really expensive. It's not very, like I mentioned, it's not very scalable. This is why a layer three switch can come in handy because notice here, we've got 12 VLANs all in one broadcast domain, just like this right here, right? We've got all, no, it'll be a broadcast domain, sorry. We've got all the VLANs sitting in here and we've only used two switches here. And, and remember, the layer two switch can also handle routing so that means he's able to route the vlan let's say we got pc and vlan 15 here and then vlan 12 here right he can go to switch if he needs to send it off to a pc and, and vlan 12 he's gonna go to the he's gonna go to the layer 3 switch and come back in here but notice we only got two devices right here so obviously that's gonna save a lot more money and not only that these switches right here got like 48 ports sometimes they got like you know, 192 ports, 250 something six ports, right? 512 ports. We got these core switches that that's able to handle a lot more port density. So that is why a layer three switch would be better than four routers right here, which gets can get pretty costly. So this let's get more in depth on the pros and cons of whether you need to use a, 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 or the difference between a router and the layer three switch, right? We talked, we, we were talking about the differences between layer two and layer three switches, right? But now we need to compare routers versus layer three because I know you're sitting here like, okay, well, what what I need a router for if the layer three can do the can do the routing, right? So when you look at this comparison right here, the routers are typically used for WAN for office, data centers, or campus environment, right? Remember we talked about the difference between a WAN and a LAN in the last video, right? LAN is the local area network. So you're dealing with just your office, your campus, your university, right? This is your local area network. Whereas the wide area network is the internet. When you need to get out of the network and go somewhere to another country or something like that, that's what a wide area network is. Routers are more capable and designed for that because they do VPN tunneling and stuff like that. And as we can see right here, it, it, it is from MPLS and VPN services, et cetera. Now, this is the old image that I got right here. Nowadays, layer three switches can handle MPLS and stuff like that, right? But the thing is, routers are more designed for that. They can handle like security for like VPN services and stuff like that. What else can a router do that a layer three switch can't? Natting, you know what natting is, right? If you don't, we'll do a video on that because I'm, I may or may not cover every bullet point on this exam. Anyway, um, like I said, if y'all can help my subscriber count to grow, if y'all like my teaching style like that, share my videos, you know, let people know on the internet at anywhere you can, Twitter, Facebook, just share this on your social network. I'll cover the whole uh, exam guide. Routers also can, can do firewalling, tunneling, IP, et cetera, right? Layer three switches can't really do that. Nowadays they have them. They're, they're making layer, they're, you know, layer three switches capabilities have been you know, more improved and stuff like that, but routers are designed for it. Now, routers, this is the big one right here. Consider the routing table is a lot bigger than what you would see on the layer three switch. Layer three switch, it'll handle a, a large MAC address table because it deals with MAC addresses and frames for the most part, right? So it's gonna it's gonna it's be able to build it, but the routers, they're considerably they have considerably bigger routing tables. It's able to able to handle BGP routes and stuff like like you can have the whole internet pretty much on a router, right? Uh, routes to anywhere, right? Layer three switches can do that, but they're not as they're not as good as a router can uh, route. That's basically why we have routers, right? So now the forwarding decision by a router is performed by the software, such as our routing protocols, EIGRP, OSPF, right? The layer three switch makes his decision using ASICs. What I say the ASICs are, it's like the chip that's inside a switch 
that does the forwarding decision, right? But these switches are more designed for frames and layer two switching and stuff like that. So yes, it can handle layer three, layer three switching or in routing and stuff like that. But like I said, a router is their forwarding decisions is, um, is made by the software and it, it, it's more designed for routing. A couple examples right here. We got the 3900 series, 4000 series. I have a, uh, I have a couple, I, like I said, I'll do a video on, on my, on my lab rack here. Uh, and then we also have, uh, the layer three switches examples, 3600 series. There's also the 3750 series switch. That's my favorite switch that also handles uh, layer three capabilities. Remember what layer three capabilities are, right? IP routing versus layer two switching, right? And then the, here's another big one right here. Interface support routers can, can handle different types of ports. We've got fiber. We've got copper, we've got, uh, we've got Sonnet, we've got OCN, T1, T3s. We've got different types of, um, different type of connectors that a router can handle. ISDN, it can handle, there's different types of networks that a router can do. Whereas layer three switching supports ethernet ports, which is the ones we're used to, like the RJ45 jack. It does copper and fiber, but it does not support, as you can see here, Sonnet. OCN, that's a typo right here. I know I, I, I know. I was thinking, I was like, that, that look like it's missing the E. But anyways, T1s and T3, it does not support that. Layer three switching is mostly, you'll see mostly RJ45 network ports on there, right? You get higher throughput of a layer on a layer three switch than a, uh, than a router, right? So what is throughput? Let's think, of, let's think of a hose, a water hose, right? How fast the water can go through the hose would be like, it's kind of like the, the data is going through the water hose, right? The, how fast the water goes through the hose is the throughput, right? So that basically the water can go through the water hose faster on a layer three switch than a router can, right? Now switching capability, we see here, it's lower. The switching capability is obviously lower than a layer three switch on a router and it has a higher switching capability. Why is that? Because of the ASICs. The ASICs are like, high speeds like circuitry that is inside the switch that can handle forwarding frames at a wider speed really fast right now and here's here's another big one right here the cost it costs way more for a router unless you're talking about like the big data center switches and stuff like that it costs way more for a router just like we explained in this slide right here they have less ports right here right so we only got like one or two ports here right here whereas a layer three switch can have maybe up to 48 you know, 92, uh, 96, 192. You can see like these big core switches. I'll, I'll give you an example. Here's an example of a, uh, uh, a layer three switch. Notice it's got way more ports than a router. A router is going to have like maybe four or five ports. Yes, you can have expansion ports and add more, but it's not going to have like a hundred something, you know, 200 something ports like a, like a core switch like this. So it has more port density then and that's what we mean by port density than a router a router has and it's designed for layer you know local area networks whereas a router is more designed for routing and on the wide area network now it's like we need to make a decision on what are, what which one do i need how do i know if i need a layer two switch or layer three switch or a router right well here's an example right here um is my domain a pure layer two switch which means what we deal with just frames VLAN, etc. So then that means we'll need a layer two switch. If I need to aggregate multiple access switches, so if I got like layer two switches just like this, right? And I need to put them together in like in a VLAN or I need to take all of their information and put it, you know, so I, where I can um, forward my frames a lot faster, then I'm gonna get like a core switch that does layer three or multi-layer switch. Sometimes they call it a multi-layer switch, really, Layer three just layer three switches just handle you know obviously routing and stuff like that but there's also multi layer switches which also handles does multi, layer four or even layer seven switching we'll you know maybe discuss that in another video but if I need to do inter VLAN routing I'm gonna use a multi layer switch inter VLAN routing is what basically what I was talking about right here when I had the PC in uh in one vlan and the other pc and the other vlan and we need to route between the two vlan that's called inner vlan routing if i need to do that yes i can add the switch for i mean i can add the router just like we did over here but the problem is like i said it's not very scalable if i need to add another vlan i need to you know put another sub interface or another um uh, add another router if i run out of ports and stuff like that it's a lot more easier if you have 
a gazillion ports on a layer three switch. So if I need to do any VLAN routing, it's best to have a multi-layer switch as opposed to a router because like I said, it's not very scalable. Do I need to go to the internet? Then obviously you're gonna need your router, just like you do at home. If I need to go to the ISP, if I need to go to wide area network as opposed to the local area network, then I'm gonna need a router. If I need to route packets from one network to another network, yes, we can do that with a layer three, but a router is designed to do that. It's designed to take IP packets and forward them to another network. And that's basically what a router does. So if I need to know, if I need to know, I need a layer two switch, those are the capabilities of a layer two switch. And remember we talked about what layer two is, right? Frames, MAC addresses, VLANs, etc. And the layer three, if I need a layer three switch, which means I also need to do those capabilities, but also routing, then I need to do get a layer three switch. Or sometimes, like I said, sometimes they call it a multi-layer switch. But really layer three switch is just layer three switch. And if I need to do routing, forward packets from one network and forward it off to another network, and obviously I'm gonna get a router. That is all I got for y'all today. We're doing it a little bit of different. In this video, we're just gonna be covering the theory. In the next video, we're gonna get our hands dirty and do, you know, and actually play with a layer three switch. Like I said, if you don't have any hardware, well, you can launch a packet tracer and do the same thing. There's no, there's no excuse. So, and from now on, we're gonna split our theory videos from our hands-on videos or our labbing videos and stuff like that. So you, you gonna see that little girl in the, uh, in the next video. That is my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. If you like what you saw, please hit me with that like button. Like I said, man, I'm trying to, you know, get grow my channel here. Go ahead and share these videos. You know, subscribe to this channel, and if you want to know when these videos are coming out, click the uh, the notification bell, which is right, it should be next to the subscribe button and stuff like that. And leave a comment below if you want to see any kind of improvement, or if you have any comments, or if maybe there's something I missed, any kind of constructive criticism. But if you hating, I'm get your hating ass off my channel. But anyways, comment, like, subscribe to the network. 